Hello everyone and welcome back to Affinity for Commander. My name is Alex. And my name is Martin. And to celebrate reaching 5,000 subscribers, we're going to be answering the questions that you guys have asked us on both YouTube and Twitter. Yeah, so diving straight in, Planeswalker Project, so shout out to Paul, oh. has asked, what's your rig like for gameplay recording? Horrible. Yeah, um, I wish I could tell you, here is the exact rig we use, go and buy it. Um, sadly, it's not because I couldn't find an actual rig to use. So I built one myself, and it is a monstrosity uh, to look at. Yeah, it's it's a lot of plastic gears and duct tape. It's um, God it bless works. duct tape. It works. <laughs> uh, yeah, That's it, it works. Uh, we use a GoPro Hero Seven Silver to actually record the games. Um, but as Alex said, it's a lot of. Uh, Plastic going like this and then this and then this and the camera kind of sits here. It's um, a constant fight against gravity is what it is. <laughs> One day it will fall down in a spectacular style and we'll just add more duct tape to compensate. Um, but yeah, my advice would be if you're trying to record a gameplay, make your own stand mm -hmm. somehow. <laughs> uh, our next question comes from Casper. How did you become so good at deck building? I've been playing Magic for four years. I still don't know how to build good decks. P.S. Love Commander. You think we're good at deck building? No, dear, no. We are not great. If if we do come across like we are good at deck building... Deck building? B deck building. <laughs> deck building. <laughs> it is simply because we've been playing those decks for quite a while, and we've refined them over years and years, and any time something doesn't work, we'll note it down and say, ah, oh, this didn't work because I didn't have cards, there wasn't enough interaction, there wasn't enough removal. I forgot to put a win condition in. It's happened. <laughs> well, yeah, I think that's probably the best advice I, I could say as well. So, for example, I have a Nekasar deck, which has never been on camera because I'm not happy with it. So it struggles to get the mana out in the correct colours. Yeah. So turn one, I'll need a, like, a one blue mana, turn two, double red, turn three, triple black. It struggles really diff like really um, a lot with that. Yeah, hard um, on colours. Yeah, so I've looked at it and gone, why is it struggling? What can I do to change it? I'll add the signets in, I'll add talismans in, which the new printings of have helped, um, and see what I can do. So it is about testing it and going over and over again and beating your head against the wall saying, what is going wrong? But when you figure it out, finding a solution for it is great. Yeah, be, be prepared that if you make a deck, you're not going to go in and win first time with it. Mm. Even if you net deck, you're not going to win straight away with that deck because you need to get used to the oh, feel no. of it. If you have an option, you need to know what's best. You can only do mm. that by having done both options in the past. So MB has asked, would you guys make a living by only playing Magic if you could? Probably not. I, I need a lot of structure. I don't think I could just randomly make sure everything was done to a particularly randomised schedule. I need a lot of routine. Yeah, um, our schedules for baking, making videos is pretty tight. Uh, we do one video each every two weeks, and so I do all the gameplay videos, Alex does all the non-gameplay videos. Um, and it is tight as it is. I think the pressure, especially if you're doing more than one week, yeah. uh, like Monster, I don't know how he does it, um, it really pumps those out, but to a high quality. And you do see that if we, we've tried speeding it up, and it just, you see the different quality yeah. quite, quite a lot. Um, so I would like to do it full time, possibly in the future, but at the moment, it's just, we're not at a high enough standard. No. We, neither of us have any editing experience or anything like that. Um, so we're not ready for it, I don't think. Our next question comes from both Jamie Fitzsimmons and Thomas Sack. <laughs> Who's asked, what's our favourite commander? And my favourite currently is Kaika, or Kaka. Kaka. Bird wizard person thing. Yeah, um, it's the fact that those tokens it produces fly. And a mana. And add mana to your mana pool and, you know, everything else. Why, why not just add more keywords in there? Oh, it's great, I love it. Yeah, I've only seen it in a few games so far, but the power level is ridiculous. It's very controlling, but being able to say, I'm going to control your board, counter your spells, kill your stuff, but also make creatures because that's fair. Um, yeah, it's a very powerful commander. Um, mine, in terms of power, would be Brea, because you get such a wide card pool of artifacts. There's not many green artifacts that I would say are good. Obviously, Birthing Pod and there's the Green White Hammer. Yeah. I can't think of any others that I would go, that deck needs green for this card. I feel like the Esper ones are the main ones and Red's just kind of there as an extra add-on. Yeah. Um, and in terms of just sheer hilarity, 
uh, felled another third path because being able to bring back an Eldrazi on turn four and swing at someone with a 10 10 annihilator four, pretty fun. Um, Not for me! Well, people underestimate mono red decks all the time, and then you go, it's reanimated, and they go, oh, okay. Kill um, Felden. Always kill Felden. And things like Unesh, just because they're just so, like, derpy. Like, if you go, here's, here's four cards, pick which creature's going to be swinging at you next turn. Uh, so our next question is from Radil, who is one of our patrons, so thank you very oh, much. Uh, three questions. We have first commander decks that we made, what's our favourite commander decks, and what was the first set you played in? So we've already answered what our favourite commander decks are. The first commander decks we made, mine was a Fenex God of Deception deck, which was all about milling your opponents. But in the end, I took it apart because people were playing cards like the original Titans, and then you just couldn't mill them out, so there was no way of winning. Yeah. Uh, but Bits of it went into my Sadisi Brew Tyrant deck, Bits of it went into Arcades, the Strategist, so it still lives on in part. My first deck was, we both went gods, mine was Keranos, God of the Storms, who was... It's great. It's the fact that every turn just bolted my Sidisi to death and I just couldn't get my commander out. <laughs> no, he, he got he got taken apart and he now lives on a Mizzix, mm -hmm. which is a much more consistent is it control deck. And the first sets we played in, the first set I ever played in was Khans of Tarkia, which was a great set. It was three and four colour decks just easily, why not? Yeah. Uh, mine was Dragon's Maze, which was not as good a set, but it got me into yeah. it, so... But there's, there's the rule, Wizards. Reprint Fetchlands. That's what we need. Our next question comes from BT Game Night, who asks, Can we have Alex and Martin team up in a two-headed giant match with their favourite EDH decks for celebrating 5,000 subscribers? And can we do another EDH tag session? Which, we unfortunately already have the gameplay scheduled for 5k. Yeah, it's already out. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, not on that one, but we definitely do have a little stockpile of little abbreviations we would like to do for the channel. Yeah, we will do this in the future. And as far as EDH goes, our decks are quite good because Alex is going to go more controlling, more blue, and I go more creature based and more green. What so, even are creatures? So they work quite well together. Whether we can get on with each other and make decisions about what's going to happen is a different story, but I'm sure that'll just uh, lead for some more yeah, fun but... times on camera where we're just waving our fists at each other. Um, and for the. EDH tag? Yeah, we love to do EDH tag. We yeah. love doing EDH tags. They're always fun to do, everyone gets involved, and it really gives a better sense of community where everyone just does something nice and we all communicate about it. Because mm, we love um, chatting to all content creators yeah. and um, just sharing ideas, getting some stuff sorted. Exactly. It's nice. Um, one of the ones that's been included is what be your favourite snacks or gaming? We don't really snack, do we? Not really, no. We might have a bottle of water, but that's about it. Don't mm. want to get your cards sticky. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is the stickiness of the cards is an issue, obviously, yeah. but I think it's more that we go to a commanded night after we've just eaten our tea. So. American we've... Starling. Dinner. Dinner. <laughs> um, so we've just eaten, and then we go and play cards, and then it's bedtime because we both get up so early yeah. before work um so yeah we don't really snack not at walking all. no, no. Um, no. patrick jindastic i'm sorry if i butchered that i usually do butcher names um asks we all have that one deck we say we're going to build what's the one deck in your case might be ramos dragon engine i always want to build a five color super greedy value deck. Yeah, why restrict yourself to just a few colours? Am I right? Choose the best from everyone. Exactly. But I can just... It would be too much to get the mana base sorted. I've got, I've got the mana base, it's just it would require me taking apart several other decks to get it. Yeah, you tend to have like a few decks that are missing pieces because they're in other things because you just get the high value cards and I'm just there like, I'm going to have soul wings in all my decks. Yeah, um, but that's what I would like to be doing, but it's just, it would take a lot of effort to finally tune it. Yeah, um, whereas I, on the other hand, have a list of several decks that I have been, if I'm an annoying about making. Um, so Darien, King of Kaljor, it's probably yeah. as good as mono what it gets, in my opinion. Uh, I just find it, I know, controversial. I just find it amusing how if you have the right cards, if every time you get hit, you gain the life back and make creatures. I just find that really funny. 
um, but some of the cards in it are quite expensive and most of my decks are pretty budget so that's yeah. why I haven't gone through with that. Um, Aloro Ageless Aesthetic I have had sat on my shelf for about nine months now. Yeah. Partially done but I will get it done this month. Um, I have the list, shut up. <laughs> have the list online ready to buy the pieces so it, it will it will be done. You'll see it soon-ish. Maybe. Who knows. Um, and there's a few other bits I've been like maybe I'll make a Mormia dig. A Mormia dig. Mormia. <laughs> Mormia. <laughs> Mormia big deck. Um, and the other one was Taya, um, the green red partner commander oh, that makes yeah. saplings. But I was going to make her by herself because I am suicidal like that. Um, and I've got the deck list set up and everything ready to uh, ready to put that in my cart. But it's, it just doesn't happen. There's so many things that go on. Like every time a new set comes out, I go, well, I need to buy all these cards to fit my other decks. And then you just don't have the time or money for both of them. So. Our next question comes from Jacob Fletcher. What's the coolest, most unique combo you've seen someone do? I can't think of one, really. Yeah, most of the combos we encounter tend to be your generic yeah. Triskelion and um, Micaeus win. Like, There's not a lot of them that we've really seen that have gone, yeah. that's unique and interesting. Yeah, we play and watch so much Commander content as a very... Weird humble brag that is. <laughs> We're but, desensitized to it. Yeah, yeah. like ev I feel like we know a lot of the combos. I don't. It's been a while since I've seen someone do a combo that I didn't immediately know about. And even that, maybe we start a play group. Like again, oh, he did a Macaeus and a, that a Triskelion as well. Ooh, thinking about it, I have just thought of this when we were at GP London mm -hmm. or Magic Fest London, as it now is. Yeah. Um, an opponent I was playing against was playing the Five Color Dragon. Uh. He, yeah, he used um, World Gorger and another dragon and did some like oh, stack flickery them, yeah. things. I hadn't seen that, but I thought that was quite interesting because um, his commander became three different dragons, but the triggers were yeah. on the stack at once. That was pretty interesting. Yeah, World Gorger was banned for a bit and for a very good reason. Um, but otherwise, I've seen Alex stop a combo, and that was the most fun I've seen combo wise. Yeah. We were playing a tournament and a person playing Gerald Tazri. And so they resolved their food chain and then put Squee, the immortal, on the stack. Twitter responded by blowing up their food chain. And they didn't have an alternate wing con, did they? So no, that was um, kind of it. So they just kind of sat there for the rest of the game. But that that was that was more amusing to me than most things. Yeah, in that magic. was more amusing than the combo itself. <laughs> I mean, it didn't help me. I still lost horrendously. But it's just satisfaction of watching yeah. the, the the light drain from someone's eyes as uh, their wing condition is stopped. The moral of the story is: don't combo kids. <laughs> Play in fact. So, Playing With Power MTG has asked, what are your plans for the channel over the next six months? Do, do we plan ahead? We, we try to start planning ahead. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be basically more of what we're already doing, but we're going to try and refine it a bit more. Have a bit of touch-up cosmetic changes. Yeah, so we've already changed the thumbnail to the videos, well, the gameplay videos at least a bit. Yeah. Um, I'm going to change the border for the next video, so it'll start from the one after this. Just a little bit because I felt yeah. like the corner pictures were taking up too much of the board, so I've tried to like shrink them a bit. But if you guys have any ideas on how we can improve the aesthetics, yeah. uh, feel free to tell us. Neither of us have any arty or designing backgrounds. We're both very science-based guys. Yeah. So, um, so we are. We don't know what looks nice. If you can tell us, this looks horrendous. Stop doing it. Uh, we will. We do take all the feedback on board. Yeah. Um, all we do, the comments, we do read every comment. By yeah, the way. even the negative ones, we take it on board and we learn from it. Yeah. Um, so please do tell us if, if you have an idea, we may well incorporate it. We were, We are also going to be getting more spilling the tea episodes. We had a few people ask about that. We will be getting more spilling the tea episodes by trying to coordinate with other content creators that live on the other side of the world, different time zones, who all also do their own jobs as well mm. as content create. That's very difficult to try and get. It's like herding cats. Yeah, so they, they can say, oh, I'm free at 8pm tonight, and we're like, that's 4am for yeah. us. We're not really free, and then you'll have the reverse of, well, are you free at this time? I'm at work, and we're like, it's 9pm. Oh, it, it's not. So, like, yeah, it's it's, it's a nightmare. But, but it's really it cool coming. when it does work. Yeah, yeah but like we've, so far, we've done one with Mudster. We've done one with Mudster. And that was fantastic. Um, we've got a few other content yeah. creators and non-content creators as well who yeah. we're collabing with, hopefully, sometime yes. soon. It's just... Like, like I like said, it's just getting the time for both of us and uh, the right, it's the right uh, stars to align to allow it to happen. We will also 
finally be getting our tokens that we've been showing off in the past few months onto internet shelves very soon. Yeah, but it's, that's... Uh, it's a tricky process trying to make things, design things, have it online. Yes. Um, but they may not be alone. The tokens may be a part of a range of items we will hopefully be Affinity selling soon. Affinity merch. Affinity merch. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Merch. Affinity for merch. Affinity for merch. merch. <laughs> Milking it. <laughs> so, Cruel Black Fox has asked, how did you find out about the game and how did you meet each other? Also, what's your favourite legendary feature and favourite gaming accessory? So... I found out about the game um, when my friend back in my home city taught me, so shout out to Dale. Uh, he taught me with, uh, it was Innistrad kind of um, deck, it was all demons and vampires, and I just fell in love with it, I love my uh, dark horror yeah. kind of stuff. Um, and then I got into that properly uh, gate, no, Dragon's Maze, Dragon's Maze yeah. um, that was my first kind of pre-release event. And then Alex got into it when I made him get into it after we started <laughs> dating, um, and he was very resistant at first, but... Yeah, he, he, and, got, he uh, got over it. And where did we meet? We met at a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament, <coughs> um, which I won. So hooray! Yeah, you <laughs> won that. Um, but that, that's, that's great if you can meet someone at a, an event like that. Yeah. Rather than like a, you know, we we could have met anywhere, but the fact that we had some, yeah. something in common to begin with, really uh, which started the conversation, it, it was it was nice. And as for accessories, we really don't no. use much. The only thing we kind of use convenient shelving here, are um, the Ultimate Guard boulders. All Which, of our decks are in these because they're, for what they are, they're pretty cheap and they're very strong. And they're very um, aesthetically pleasing as well. Yeah, you've got a rainbow of colours. Um, but other than that, we don't have any fancy deck boxes because we've just no. got too many decks Not like the, We don't have anything like the Professor's um, Hedron that he has for mm. decks or anything special like that. We're very... Minimalist. Yeah, very minimalist. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, like, we have the dice that we use in the videos are just in like a regular bag, yeah. um, so there's um, nothing fancy there. Nah. And for our favourite legendary creatures, well, we already saw our favourite commanders, but just generic legendary creatures, mine would have to be a Traxa, just because no a Traxa <laughs> was the first proper legendary creature that I took the deck, stripped it all out, and then made a new deck around it. And mine would have to be Hazazon Tamar. Um, I don't own the deck because the card was printed in Legends and it's so quite expensive. Um, but I would one day like to make a deck around him just because I like the Sand Warrior tokens he makes. And I think it's it's quite a fun looking commander to play. Um, but who knows, maybe in the future I will finally spill out the cash and do it. Yeah. Goal of the reserve list. Our next question comes from Gudo Campus. Dreamy. I'm so sorry. What happened to spilling the tea? Does Alex work on radio? A deep and strong voice is awesome. Feeding his ego. Um, spilling the tea will be back, as you mentioned earlier. It's just really difficult finding time for people uh, where it's convenient for both parties to actually do it. Um, and Alex does not work on the radio, sadly, but he does use that voice to teach the youth of tomorrow, so... Yeah, <laughs> it has its yeah. it has its purposes, I suppose. Yeah, it's lovely. It's all right. Drangnol Dave has asked, "Do you think the London Mulligan rule will help or hinder the format? And what type of commanders are you thinking we will see in the new commander precon this year?" I hate it. I like it. Um, for me, I thought it'd be an issue of commanders that use the deck more, like Grenzo Dungeon Warden. Uh, it hasn't been as much of an issue as I thought, and. I have had times where normally I'd have gone down to five and been like, oh, this hand's really dodgy, I can't go down to four though, I've got to keep it. Whereas this time you go up to seven, you can go, right, there's a higher variety of cards. I don't care I'm getting rid of these two or three because the cards I'm keeping will get me going. So it seems like it stops a player being out of the game early on if they have a bad mulligan. I think, I think it's really good at our level of play. But I think it gets to be more of an issue when you get to sort of CDH level of play, where literally knowing what two other cards on the bottom of your library are, and you can sculpt your hand a lot more, I think that's a bit of a more problem. Yeah, and I suppose in like other formats, like 60 card formats where you had four of each card, yeah. it would have a bigger impact, yeah, or even Legacy just going, I yeah. can do this. Whereas in Commander, where it's single turn, you're probably going to be like searching or shuffling your deck at some point anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, the only time it would 
work. Like, there's only a few janky kind of yeah, things that go nothing. reveal cards till you um, till you reveal a card you've named. Bin them, keep that. Like we don't, we don't personally see that that often. No, um, not our play group. Yeah, so I I like it. He hates it. We'll keep trying it and see how it goes. Yeah. And for the commanders of the new year, we just had a leak. If you don't want to know about it, then skip this bit. Although the leak will probably have been confirmed by the time we put this video out. But warning has been given. Spoiler warning. Just lick me. <laughs> the mechanics are madness, flashback, populate, and morph. So, of the cards we already own with these mechanics, morph is the most powerful. Yes. There's the most support for it. There's the most support for it. There's definitely the most support for it because Annie Morphs is a fantastic deck. But the stuff like, well, Madness, discarding cards is never great unless they print something that really synergizes well with it. Or adds blue so you can draw cards off it too. Yeah. Uh, flashback. To me, Flashback is if there's 100 cards of Flashback, there's about 5 that are broken. The rest are really, really meh. But again, I know the cards are probably going to put in it, but they sh but they need some more support for it to be a mechanic of deck. And Populate... Currently, there's not that many cards with Populate. Yeah. Um, to me, it seems like you would need tokens that have abilities. So, like, the Ajani's Pride mate that the new Ajani yeah. makes. Or, like, or... the um, Eternalized tokens from our Devastation. Yes. Or if you had someone like, for example, a Rex Sage, but in token form, being able to go populate blue and not populate yeah, blue, that, that, that would be super. needed to make it good, and then it'd be really a deck to contend and, with. And it also means that that's it wouldn't be a case of okay, this now replaces Rex Sage mm. because oh, it's only a token; it's much worse. Yeah. However, being able to populate it in that one deck would make it viable. Yeah, but you would need a lot of tokens for that deck, so we'll see yeah. how it goes. Nosebleed asks, favorite stroke least favorite. Individual colours, multicoloured combos to play. Uh, favourite? My favourite monocoloured would be mono green because it just seems like the most power straight out of the bat. Okay. And um, green black's my favourite colour combination just because graveyard mechanics are my kind of jam. My favourite mono by default, I think, has to be mono blue because mono blue is the only deck mm. that I own. Because... You don't do mono colours, do you? <laughs> no. But Urza is really good. Um, but yeah, I don't really do mono colours. However, my favourite combination would probably be Bant. Because you get mm. the draw, counter, ramp, and the best removal in the format. Yeah, that is a pretty solid combination. Well, yeah, I've got Tuvasa and Derevi. But you stick to three or more colours, realistically. You have a few decks that are two colour. Just like having all the options. Yeah, value. And least favourite? Um, mine would probably be Blue. Um, even though I do it in a mono blue deck, the yeah. Unesh deck, um, to me, Unesh is a bit of an outlier because Sphinx Tribal. If you go Tribal, it's kind of different. But as a generic rule for blue legendary creatures, there doesn't seem to be many win conditions that aren't the same combo in each deck. There's no... You can't really swing with creatures and kill them. Again, excluding Unesh. Uh, there's not really mm. many creature-based threats and there's not really any other win conditions other than I'm going to come off and win. And I, I personally just don't like that style of playing. I mean, I'm fine for people to do it, but I'm just going to beat your face into giant monsters and have more fun doing it. Uh, my least favourite uh, is Mono White. Just, just because... I don't need to justify that. Uh, and least favourite multicoloured. Probably... Is it? Because... Is it, though? Is it... <laughs> Uh, so, um, just because it's very similar to the Mono Blue arguments, but is it to me is counter all your stuff, control the game, and then win with a red spell, which is yeah. you all over. It's great. It just to, it's not fun to me. I, I I enjoy the back and forwards of games, whereas for that one, you are having most fun when you're stopping that backwards and forwards. So it reminds me of that meme of Th Thanos. With Thor throws his axe into his chest. Should have finished the, me mo off. the mono blue player with low life. <laughs> you should have aimed for the head with my infinite combo. <laughs> uh, and your least favourite? Naya. Because don't get me wrong, I like the idea of Naya, but I can't think of a Naya commander that I went, this 
all of this in my face right now. Gishas, dinosaurs, all in your face right now. I can't think of a good Naya commander. <laughs> Moving on. So Lord Waterbird says, I have built a Queen Marchessa EDH deck and I need some good cards. Anyone have any ideas? Firstly, stop what you're doing right now and play a blue deck. Alternatively, uh, if you want to actually have fun <laughs> playing Magic, um, I would say the Queen Marchessa needs to have the monarchy and stop other people getting the monarchy. So some good ways of doing that are Kazul, Tyrant of the Cliffs, who makes three threes whenever your opponent fails to pay three mana for attacking you, which you can then use to block their attackers and hopefully retain the monarchy. Um, Skyline Despot, because it makes more dragons, which you can again use to block, but also to attack the 5 5 flyers. And Crawl Space, because that physically stops your opponent attacking you of loads of creatures. See, I personally thought, nah, we're gonna be. We're a queen. We need to tax people. Slay! So, authority of the consoles, firstly, just slows everyone down, and if you do get hit for the monarchy, then you have so much life you don't care. Same thing for Knights of the Black Rose. You want the monarchy? Fine, but you're paying for it. And my personal boy, Kambal. Because no one ever gets rid of Kambal. I've never seen anyone remove Kambal from a game. They just let it whittle them down. And he's just really good. Mm, it's like, oh, a two loss life and then gain yeah. two life. Isn't that bad? But then you realise when every player is thinking that and then the Kambal good. players on like 90 life and you're like, oh, when did that happen? Our next question comes from Cody Lamore, whose avatar is a sadly dead meme. Oh, it is! <laughs> <laughs> what is the... I never noticed that. <laughs> do you know, do we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, carry on with the question. What is your most memorable game stroke play in a game Get It Together now? <laughs> So, mine would have to be the Arch Enemy game we did for like, was it 250 or 500 subs? That was nothing. It was a milestone video, yes. like a long time, well, I'll say a long time ago. A lot of subscribers ago. A long, ago. long time ago. Uh, we just completely lost it, haven't we? Um, where it's Arch Enemy, and Alex is playing his Narset deck. Yeah. He has killed me, he's killed one opponent, there's one player left. He draws his final card of his library for his turn, and he's got lethal on board. He's going to win. And he reveals the last scheme of his scheme pile to be draw three cards, which he can't do, so he loses because he was greedy. Punished for my hubris. So that was just satisfying to me, watching Alex stop himself winning. My favourite one only occurred a few weeks ago, actually, where I was playing Gave Guru Spores with... There was no tutor involved in this. It was just generic drawing of cards, and I killed everyone on turn five with Infect. Triumph of the Horse. Triumph of the Horse. It needs banning. It's so unfair. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Rochox has asked, how many and which decks do you own in paper? Do you lean towards good stuff, synergy decks, or special themes? We own 28 decks. Yeah, we have 28 us. decks at the moment. If you would like to see any of the deck lists or potentially purchase them, you feel free to go to TCG Play following the link in the description below. Yeah, um... It helps the channel out a lot if you buy through our affiliate links, so yeah, please you know, do so. You don't buy the cards anyway, just go through that one, it's fine. Mm. Um, and in terms of do we le what do we lean towards in the decks, you lean towards value, value power, I oppression. Am, I am the Emperor from episode 3. And Unlimited power! And I am essentially the Ewok who just sits there going, this looks really fun! <laughs> you um, are an Ewok. But... I sit there going, this is just really silly and fun. Now you're dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you are the Ewok because no one thinks you're a threat. And then, you know, you throw a boulder on a cliff and kill an innocent stormtrooper who's just trying to make a living for his wife and two children. How could you? Yeah. So Alex is the clear threat on the uh, in the shadows. Yeah. Our next question comes from Words and Stuff. Does he often, I'm assuming me, do you often play with Narset outside the channel, and at least it's not extra turn tribal? At least. That is the smallest <laughs> bit of mercy, that it's not extra turn tribal. I did consider it. Didn't think it'd be fun, though. Um, but no, I specifically built that deck to be able to 
No, it yeah, hold its own in a game of Arch Enemy, and then I immediately took it apart because I don't think it'd been fun to play against anyone. And that's the thing. I think that's something that I try and do is I don't, is I make decks for Arch Enemy because I like people hitting me a lot. Because I like I, I like play, I like yeah. playing. I guess essentially get to play four times the amount of magic because everyone else, if everyone else is attacking me. Yeah, Alex likes playing. This is always Arch yeah, Enemy, this is even when an it's impromptu not. Game of uh, Arch Enemy. He likes being the threat at the table, the all powerful. He likes making other people gang up on him to then knock them down because there's nothing better than having two or three people team up to get something happening. And Alex going, nah. Then you've not just stopped one person; you've stopped a group of people yeah. from doing what they wanted. On a similar thing, the best thing, I know this is a tangent, but I'm enjoying it, that when someone goes, we'll build this big board to attack you, thanks for that, mob rule, I'll take those, kill you back. Yeah. Next question. So, DarkX64 asks, is there an archetype you feel is underrepresented in EDH, and or an effect you want to see a commander have for a specific build around? Me, I always wanted an effect like Death Shadow in the command zone. I really love the risk of going low for high reward. But Darien is mono white and doesn't and doesn't interest me. And V last from N20 costs eight mana. I feel your pain there. Um, yeah. Um, I I really like your idea of having a Death Shadow effect in the command zone. We had uh, the commanders from was it 2013, like Prosh and Derevi. Derevi. They yeah, who interact with the command zone in a way that we hadn't seen before. Yeah, like the the beast one, the Naya one that says it comes in with counters equal to the amount of times yeah. you cast it. Or Prosh um, gets the amount of kobolds for mana spent casting him. Yeah, it seems like it. The command attacks mixed with the ability both go up rather than going. Yeah. It's getting worse and worse each time I cast it, uh, which is nice. So having something like Death Shadow, where your life total is. The power of it. That's a really, really cool idea. I really yeah. enjoy that. Or like a reverse Sarah's avatar. Yeah, yeah. Um, personally, I would like to see more support for, ironically, group hug decks. They need some love. <laughs> oh, they need some of their own love. <laughs> self love. <laughs> self love. <laughs> self care. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> but it's more the fact that I've yet to see a group hug deck that did not follow this pattern. Here's all this benefit for you of cards and mana, and the rest still went. Thanks. Die, please. Yeah, I think that if a group hug deck would have, say, everyone draws two extra cards a turn effect, but when an opponent draws a card, get a life yeah. attached to it, or, that would make it so it's worth you playing it and you're not just helping everyone else whilst you're tapped out because you've cast it. Or maybe more, everyone draws, the, everyone draws a card at the table, but you draw three. Yeah, just something that makes it a bit more in your favour, mm. but not enough that people are going to start turning on you. Um, because, like you say... You give everyone all these resources, and they go, right, here's my hand on the table, kill everyone. Or the group hug player who's got the least threats because they've been past casting all their mm. mana into those spells, else everyone else has been building up. Um, so that'd be, yeah, that, I, can, I can see that. Um, Your idea? I think the energy has some strong cards, but not enough for a commander deck. And they're never going to reprint energy in standard because it completely messed up standard at the time. They had to ban a one mana green spell. Yeah, so um, I think that if they were to do a commander set where one of the decks is energy based, that could work because it's not going to affect anything. Yes, else. that might be nice. Um, because then you can use some of these cards. It is quite a, a cool concept having an additional yeah. resource. Um, but also looking at other things that we would like to maybe see included. Certain tribes that might need more support, like Moonfolk. Mm -hmm. I, oh, Moonfolk. I can't think of a single Moonfolk that isn't Tamio. Well, they all have return land to your hand effects, but yeah. the fact that they're in mono blue is a bit like, okay, I need that land to yeah, counter yeah, things. Blue does not run for so me. maybe having a Bant or a green blue combined, maybe yeah, even Tamio green. herself, yeah. and then throw in a lot more Moonfolk, that'd be quite interesting. Yeah. Um, Landfall triggers would be great. Naga as well. There's a lot of Naga, but not a no lot. No synergy. Yeah, there's no support. You need a commander that said Naga, Naga do, do something. <laughs> Horses. <laughs> okay. There's at least one card. Crested from, yeah, from Our devastation that cares about horses. Yeah. Hounds. There are loads. We've got a mono. We've got a cat deck. We've got Arabo. 
Where's my dog deck? Doggos. Where are the tribal doggos? good boys? Where are the tribal <laughs> good boys? And no, Mawu does not count because he doesn't care about other doggos. And illusions as well because there's yeah. colors. Illusions are typically more powerful than they should be, but if you target them, they yeah. die. I would say that's probably the best supported tribe that we've mentioned. But yeah, because you've got that guy that gives illusions hexproof, and yeah. you've got loads of cool effects. I think if you gave a bit more power to it. Uh, maybe added a different color because I think it's the mostly mono blue. Yeah, mostly maybe mono add blue. white as well, and then you've got yeah. a sick deck on your hands there. And that will be all the questions that we've got. Thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed, liked, retweeted, and shared all the videos. It has helped the channel grow immensely, so thank you for that. Yeah, we couldn't have done this without you all, uh, so this there's just as much for you as it is for us. Yeah, and hopefully we'll continue to grow. And also a super special thank you to our fantastic patrons who do help out the channel so much. And with that, and as always, we'll see you next time. Bye.